we are introducing ideas on, and um, helping our members understand a future world. And that future world is, to my mind, around how can we incorporate green assets, natural assets, green infrastructure uh, into the built environment. We held a conference uh, a couple of months ago, and we had a mayor from one of the ba uh, major councils there, very much a thought leading mayor. And she said that asset management is local government. The principles of asset management need to feed right the way through local government because that is what we do. The infrastructure now accounts for about 70% of global greenhouse emissions. And then what I said before about you know, governments around the world, it's not just Australia, pouring money into infrastructure assets, you know, more and more and more, you know, still 60 to 70% haven't been uh, built yet. So that's going to add further to the whole emissions and emissions process. Um, you only have to look at the US. The US has got one, committed $1.2 trillion uh, in its infrastructure bill. This area around green infrastructure assets, or some people call it natural assets, is something that we're also now beginning to talk to our members about and sort of going, okay, there are options here. It doesn't have to be a gray, hard infrastructure solution. There are green, we should be looking at green assets and green infrastructure either to complement or to replace. Now, many of you will understand that, and it's actually getting the engineering profession to also understand that. And what I will say, now this is, this is just picking up on uh, Lyndall's remark. This is a whole change process, right? It's getting people to think differently. And one of the solutions I, I talk about is this whole cross-sectoral approach. So my understanding is most of you are arborists or the culturalists, that you manage trees, urban forests, right? my group and our engineers, and you've also got another group, the accountants. All these people need to work together to be able to solve these problems. And it will take a cross-sectional approach. And I think that's really, really important. The other, the other thing with all this is um, taking a long-term view. So the benefits of green infrastructure, and this is what we're beginning to talk to our members about, this is why you should be considering this as an alternative solution. We all know that it reduces carbon emissions, reduces consumption, reduces waste, uh, air quality improvements, aesthetics, even the basics around aesthetics, and also um, improved human wealth and health, um, human health and well-being. These are all important um, byproducts or um, positives when it comes to green infrastructure. And these are some of the things that we should be talking about because a green infrastructure or green asset solution, it doesn't just come down to the numbers and typically the engineering profession and the accounting profession, and I'll talk about this, about the valuation because there's some, there's some ideas around how you can value um, green assets, but typically it's come down to the, the numbers but it's, not, it's more than that, it's more broader than that. It's a broader conversation, there are broader benefits. It's not just down, it doesn't just come down to the balance sheet.